Good morning again. I'm John Dick, and I've been asked to uh, discuss briefly the uh, parts of a fern and the nomenclature that I'm going to use when I do a fern workshop. This is a uh, marginal wood fern. It's uh, oh about 16 inches. It's a fairly short uh, specimen of its kind, and uh, I pulled it out from the uh, the growing stem, which is underground, in order to show you the, the various portions of it, and it's a, it, it's a pretty characteristic fern in that it has all of the distinguishing characteristics that you may or may not find on any other fern. Uh, I'll start with the simple stuff. Uh, this is the blade. The overall structure of the fern, the leaf, if you will, is called a blade. The section of the stem below of the fern is called the stipe, and a lot of the distinguishing characteristics of ferns in the northeast are in the stipe. They have to do with the color, the structure, the scaliness or lack of scaliness, uh, hair scales, uh, leaves, there, there are all sorts of vague and imprecise terms relating to the, the condition and coarseness of the stipe. And this one, as I'm pretty sure you can see is relatively scaly. It is in fact kind of shaggy down at the bottom. The stipe continues up into the body of the fern. That section of stipe, sometimes called rachis, R-A-C-H-I-S. I don't know what the distinction is truly, but there is one current fern key that actually cross sections the rachis. And I'm here to tell you there are lots and lots of little illustrations of cross sections in that book. They all look very similar. I don't know how sectioning the rachis can possibly help you, but knock yourself out. Once you pick the fern, you may as well cut it to pieces. The individual blades of the fern, here's one right here in front of my finger, uh, would correspond to the leaves on a plant to a greater or lesser degree. They do photosynthesize. They do, uh, they do have all of the functions of any green leafy plant. There are no flowers, so they're not, uh, they're not feeding the plant in order for it to directly produce uh, seeds and, and attractants, but ferns do have their own ways of reproducing, and that brings me to the spores. Uh, on a marginal wood fern, the spores express themselves near the tip of the blade. The last third to half of the blade will exhibit spores, and because the spores occur on the edges of the leaflets or blades or pinnae. They will be they will be indicative. This is basically the easiest way to tell that you're looking at a marginal wood fern is that you have an upright green fern with some scales on the stem, sometimes fewer, sometimes more. But you will always find if there is a spore bearing stem, you will always find that the spore cases are on the very edges of the subleaflets or the pinnae of the annuals. In season, these little spore cases are a deep ultramarine blue. It's an absolutely lovely color. It contrasts very nicely with the bluish green of the frond itself. It's not a diagnostic characteristic because it only occurs part of the year, and I've never seen that mentioned in any field guides, but it's there, I'm here to tell you. Uh, wood ferns generally, and this is a wood fern, this is marginal wood fern, this one's been kind of eaten, but the one closest to the stem you'd expect to be longest is not. It's actually shorter, and the relative length of that second pinnule is also diagnostic. There are probably nine or ten different wood ferns, species, subspecies, varieties, and that's a diagnostic characteristic. You look for a more or less intact lower pinner, and you look for that pinnule and see its relationship to its neighbors. That won't be spore bearing. Again, spores are up here near the tip of the blade, but it's a, it's a diagnostic characteristic. Uh, the simplest thing, most fern guides will start out with the basic shape of the frond, and they will say either you have a tapering frond, which 
comes to a point at the tip, most ferns do, and broadens as it drops toward the base, or you have a double tapering frond, which, in which the pinules grow closer and closer to the stipe as you grow closer and closer to the bottom of the fern, or you have a semi-tapering. This is a semi-tapering fern. Most of the wood ferns are more or less semi-tapering. I find semi-tapering is a kind of a compromise between those ferns that are broadly triangular and those ferns that really do double taper. It's marginally helpful. It'll probably get you to wood fern, but frankly the best way to get to wood fern is to look for scales on the stem. There are very few other ferns in the northeast that have abundance of scales on the stem or the stipe, as the terminology is used. Same, same structure. It is a stem is called a stipe on, on a fern. Uh, those are the primary diagnostic characteristics. You can, of course, pull up the whole plant and take a look at the underground structure. And most importantly, you can look at the way the frond is growing out of the ground, whether it clusters from a central point or whether it grows individually as, as on a runner. And that, again, will give you some clue as to what you're looking at. Here in the Wildcat, there are at least 22 varieties of ferns. And uh, this coming Friday, I hope to show at least 20 of them to the participants in my workshop. Thus endeth the lesson.
those are the primary diagnostic characteristics. You can, of course, pull up the whole plant and take a look at the underground structure. And most importantly, you can look at the way the frond is growing out of the ground, whether it clusters from a central point or whether it grows individually as, as on a runner. And that, again, will do you some clue as to what you're looking at. Here in the Wildcat, there are at least 22 varieties of ferns. And uh, this coming Friday, I hope to show at least 20 of them to the participants in my workshop. Thus endeth the lesson.